Well, good morning and greetings. I am Dr. Paulina Van, and I am the host of uh, this show, the, po the Poetry of Healing, and I am the author of Regala Healing, an evocative approach for self-care, self-understanding, and inner healing. And I am just want to welcome you from all over the world. And we love to know where you're joining from. So if you'd put it in the chat, I'd really appreciate it. Well, I am happy you're here with me live. I thank all of you who have uh, watched the rebroadcast shows during the time I was on vacation and doing what I asked you to do. That is rest, relax, refresh. I had to walk my talk, you know? Well, September is a very special month because it marks one year that my first book, Regala Healing, was released. It has been a tremendous year of unexpected blessings for all who have been touched by the reading or listening to the poems in the book. In honor of this work, I am dedicating this month to the subject of healing. During this first show, I decided to share with you some not so secret micro practices about how you can heal your mind and your spirit and re-energize yourself for the life you want to live. It's actually the story of how I began my recent healing journey. So stay with me and I hope you too will begin your healing and nurturing journey during the show today. So what I would like us to accomplish during this time together is that um, I will show you and describe micro practices I use to increase my self-love, self-care, and ultimately open my heart for healing in just one month of doing these activities. I will provide you resources so that you can start your own journey today if you choose to. We will end with a meditation designed to support your journey. Okay. We always begin with a centering exercise and that's to help focus and collect our energy for this time together. It's Sunday morning and so some of you may be getting ready for your religious services, or depending on where you are, you may just be coming back. And so I just ask that um, you invite you to participate in these centering, and it's gonna prepare us for healing and developing a deep love for ourselves and others. This is a time for you, a gift to yourself. So it's gonna take about two minutes, and so let's take a moment and settle into the space so we can be fully present. And those of you who have been with me before are familiar with the practice. It's called Heart Math Focus Breathing to Open Our Beautiful Hearts. And so as always, it's always an invitation. So you may be sitting, standing, laying down, uh, wherever you are. I invite you to lower your gaze, close your eyes, or if it's more um, comfortable for you, give a soft gaze and focus on a stationary object. And I'll guide you to connect with your heart by doing heart-focused breathing. So let's begin. I'd like you to focus your attention in the area of your heart which is on the left side of your chest. And I want you to imagine that you, your breath is flowing in and out of your heart or chest area, breathing a little slower and deeper than usual. And so some tips I have is you can put your hand over your heart. So just to kind of center you and focus you. The other thing is, you breathe in through your nose and out through your nose. Okay, so that's a little different. I used to have you breathe uh, out through your mouth, but now 
We're going to breathe in through our nose slowly and out through our nose. And it may also help you to uh, breathe with your heart if you push your belly out when you breathe in. So that will stimulate your heart getting bigger. Just imagine your heart getting bigger when you inhale, a big heart getting bigger. And then when you exhale, pull your stomach in and imagine your heart getting smaller. Okay. And you want to do it slowly. You may count to five, inhale, and, and count to five, exhale, or a little slower or shorter or longer, depending on how comfortable you feel. Okay. So why don't you take a couple of breaths on your own? Breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. Lastly, now that we've landed into our hearts, I'd like you to take a deep breath in to notice you are here and then take a deep breath to notice how your body feels and then take a deep breath to enter the session. For those viewers who are just joining us, I am Dr. Paulina Van, the author of Regala Healing and the host of this show, The Poetry of Healing. And you're just in time because today's show is all about using micro practices to promote healing of the mind and the spirit. So that we're all kind of coming from the same place, I want to give you uh, my description, what I'll be using of healing um, during the program today. So healing, when we think of healing, we immediately think of physical, but it's not only physical, it's psychological and social, spiritual, and other aspects of a person's experience. Other terms that's used to describe healing is becoming whole again or having harmony between mind, body, and spirit. Healing is a state of mind, and it's also, and can be, a spiritual experience. But one thing for sure, healing is an intensively personal experience. It's what the individual feels, believes that's healing for them. And so one of the things you can think of is that it's this balancing act. It's a reconciliation when you're trying to find meaning between uh, a distressing event or a distressing situation and then what your perception of wholeness is as, as a person. The other thing we know for sure is that caring for yourself is a force for healing, okay? So one of the um, things, uh, I usually have guests or you have me, um, but today I want to share with you a project um, that I did to increase my self-love and my self-care, and it includes micro practices. So I'm going to show you PowerPoint. Okay, so this is the first time I'm doing it here. Here we go. Oh, perfect. All right. So um, this is a, uh, a certification program um, I was in uh, just before. Well, it was also during the pandemic, but I started uh, before the pandemic. And it's a, a program uh, at the Watson Caring Science Institute, um, and it's housed in Boulder, Colorado, but we did it virtually. And my mentor, Dr. Jean Watson, is the founder of, of that institution. And it's all about, um, it started with caregivers, but anyone can do the program. It's all about learning to love and care as you care for others. So it's all about being kind and um, coming uh, to the situation with joy. So it may seem, you know, why do, why did I need to learn that? Well, there's so many, when you're a healthcare provider, there's so many stressors that's pulling at you, but it doesn't matter. You can be a healthcare provider, whatever uh, your work or, or 
purpose in life is, there's stressors. And if you can come to the situation with love and caring for others, it just makes it much better. But it all starts with yourself. So let me just share with you um, what I did. So for 32 days, just before um, the lockdown happened um, in the United States, I practiced for 32 days, three micro practices. And so let me show you, um, I'm gonna describe each one to you. So the first thing I did was a guided meditation or mindfulness session, 20 minutes a day. So I chose, uh, recorded meditations that were exactly 20 minutes or they're about. And so from the Watson Caring Institute, there, there are um, meditations, then the self, uh, the path of self-love, the self-love meditations. During that period, Oprah and Deepak did a 21 day series, which is free um, regarding perfect health. So I chose some from there. And then YouTube, there are thousands, maybe millions of relaxation and meditation tapes and so, or videos. And so what I did is depending on what was going on that day or, or what I feel I needed, um, I would just look up maybe um, something to reduce my stress or something to help me sleep. So those were my choices. And at the um, after this program is ended, I'm going to drop into the chat. Um, a whole list of resources for everything I did during this time. The next thing I did, and some of you may have read the book, The Secret, or heard the book, The Secret, but this is a journal that one of my um, former students uh, gave to me. And um, it's, I'll, I'll show you how it goes. So twice a day when I woke up, um, after my prayers or devotion, I wrote in, in this journal. And then before I, I went to sleep, before my prayer and devotion that night, I um, wrote in this book. And I have a page um, that I'd like to share with you. Oops. Hmm. Not sure you can read it. But this is my actual uh, two pages from my actual journal. And um, it was the week of February the 13th, 2020. And it was the week of um, our first year wedding anniversary. So yes, I remarried late in life. But how it goes is on the left side, it's gratitude now. So what you are grateful for right now, and then your grateful intention. So what you are grateful for that you believe is going to happen or, or want to happen. And so um, I'll read uh, on our anniversary. We were married on February the 14th, Valentine's Day. And I wrote, I am truly grateful for uh, the wedding anniversary celebrations with strengthen our connection as a loving, compassionate, committed, and happy couple. Okay. So that was my intention um, on the, the uh, 14th. And then something else, I'll just read one other one. And on the 13th, I said, I am grateful, I'm truly grateful for family unification and, and healing. And so um, you can uh, uh, backtrack or rewind this video if you wanna read the other ones, but this is an actual two pages. And I really had to, um, look through the journal um, over those 32 days and find an appropriate uh, page to share with you because I wrote these gratitude um, statements thinking no one else would read them, but I wanted to share um, absolutely with you. So the themes or the, the topics that I um, addressed that week or thought about it and really embrace that week were related to rest, extended family unification and harmony. And you know, we all want that. Our wedding anniversary, personal meditation practice. I said I was happy that I was continuing it. Intuitive eating, loving marriage and organized home. Yeah, our evergreen home was, it wasn't cluttered, 
but there were 25 years of stuff in the shelves and closets. Okay, the last thing I did was um, I had a massage weekly for 90 minutes, no matter where um, uh, I was. And so I say this was a treat for me because I don't get weekly massages, but I wanted to do something that would promote really strong relaxation. And I love massages and this is what I did, but um, you can do other things that bring on uh, intense relaxation. And I'll share with you what I'm doing now. I'm not still getting weekly massages. Okay, so what were the results? So, you know, I made myself a project. Yeah, I became the subject of this project, but I really wanted to have some hard evidence. You know, I'm a scientist as well. So I wanted to have some hard evidence for myself, but also to share with others that taking time, either meditation, quiet time, gratitude journaling made a difference. And so I filled out um, surveys before I started this and um, after, and I want to show you what happened. So this is uh, the self-care survey, um, and it's from my Mentors Institute, the Watson um, Caring Science Institute. And this measures self-care, how well you care for yourself. And you can see there are five items. Um, I treat myself with loving kindness. I practice self-care. I have helping relationships. I create a caring environment, and I value um, my own beliefs. And as you can see, the light pink is after the 32 days. The uh, dark pink is um, what I measured before the 32 days. I improved my self-care practices 62%. So you can see here um, this line, the light uh, pink line, showing you how much more um, overall I was doing for myself. And I think th these are pretty even, but the the two I'd say that uh, increased the most, I'd say was um, practicing self-care activities and really um, having more helping relationships because it's hard for me to ask for help. Okay. All right. So the next one is self-love. I measured my self-love before and after. And um, again here, this is a self-love pulse check. It's free online. Again, I'm gonna give you the resources in, in the chat, but I increase the self-love of myself. Well, of course, self-love is myself, um, 62%. Um, and that was amazing. And they're all pretty, much the same, but I think the the ones that I increase the most in, again, is having loving relationships and living my heart's desires. So um, not really caring what other people had to say about the way I navigated my life and being self-compassionate. And remember, I did um, a show when I reran it uh, during the summer of loving yourself, being your, your best friend, okay? And so the unexpected results from this was I opened my heart and I just let, let go, okay? And really let out uh, my childhood trauma, okay? And that began, began this healing journey. Um, I wrote, um, it's a hundred healing narratives. The first one talks about my hurt and um, the other ones um, are healing. And so I'll, I'll give you information um, about where to get, get the book. And um, so it was, it was just a trend, transformation for me. So what's happening now? What am I, what am I doing now? I still do um, daily meditation. Some days I miss, but very rarely. I journal most days, I'd say at least five days a week. Um, I do self-love affirmations, and those are available online or in books. I definitely have quiet time where I just sit 
and I may watch my breathing or I may listen to music. I love gospel music. And I just listen, um, listen to it. I love Frankie Beverly and Mays too. I'm old school. So I, I like to listen to his music too. Um, I meditate with my husband sometimes and I'm, I'm just astounded how, how well he does. And I started doing virtual um, uh, exercise classes and um, a poetry uh, club and just doing a variety of self-soothing activities. So, you know, instead of the massage, um, I'm doing these things, but you can, whatever, you know, helps you to be soothed and relax. And it may be swimming, it may be just walking, it may be being with your children or grandchildren, it may be reading, whatever, commit to doing that um, on a regular basis so that you can have um, your self-care practice, okay? Um, I wasn't gonna share this, but it came up. This um, is a part, it's not the full poem, but this was the first one I wrote when I opened my heart and it's entitled, It Hurts. It hurts because I buried my experiences. It hurts because my emotions came through anyway. It hurts because I push people away who could have been helpful and loving. It hurts because I suffered emotionally most of my life. It hurts because I may have impacted others unknowingly, but now I am healing the hurts. Hurt is fleeting. Hurt is losing power. Hurt is dead. And so that's what came out of my open heart as soon as I let go and allowed myself to begin loving myself and, and caring for myself. Let's see what we have. So if you have your camera, you can scan this or um, just jot down regalahealing.com. That's my uh, website. And uh, there's videos there and other uh, soothing self-care activities and uh, also a way to contact me or, or purchase my book. So I'm gonna leave, okay, I'm gonna leave this and we're gonna do a meditation now before we close. And this meditation is um, from the Black Girl uh, in Ohm um, website. And it was identified as being for Black girls and women everywhere. But I really believe that this, you'll find that whoever you are, this will um, resonate with you, or I'm hoping it will resonate with you. So again, this is about five minutes, okay? So I'd like you to find a comfortable position as you did when we did the centering exercises. And so you can stand up, sit down, lay down. I ask you to lower your gaze or close your eyes or find a soft gaze and focus on something that's stationary and not moving. So this is for you. I want you to notice your breath. Notice where your body moves as you breathe. Be curious about how you are feeling in your body. Ask yourself questions. Does my breath move in my body? I mean, of course it moves in your body. Does your breath move in your belly? Does my breath move in my throat? As you breathe, you may notice your breath more with your eyes closed. So if it feels good to you, now is the time to close your eyes and deep breathely. And notice how the breath wants to relax you. So allow it to. With every exhale, releasing, letting go of what bothered you today. And Inhale, say hello to everything you want. 
more of right now. Maybe you exhale annoyance and frustration and inhale peace, love, ease, happiness. Practicing inhaling deeply until you can't take another breath. Practice, practice exhaling completely until there is no more breath in your belly. So you're going to inhale and exhale. And I'd like you to continue to breathe and notice how you feel. What are your feelings right now? As you breathe in and out, remember you're breathing in and out through your nose, slowly. Do you notice anything that surprises you? Are you letting go of something you've been holding on to for a long time? There's still time. Think of something to let go of when you exhale. Is there something you'd like to invite more of in your life? Just for you. You deserve to get clear about what you want to see in your life. What, that, what might that be? With your next inhale, invite it in. I'd like you to continue to breathe. How do you feel? How does it feel to release what you no longer deserve or desire and receive what you'd like to see more of? Take a long, intentional breath in and out. Okay. And continue to breathe. Do you hear anything? Is there a message arising for you, coming up from your heart to your mind? Breathe. Notice what is in your heart. Is it communicating to you? Notice how it feels to hear your heart speak. Notice how it feels to listen to your body. Feel yourself in this moment, alive, aware, surrounded by love. And know, as you move through the rest of the day, the rest of the week, the rest of the month, the rest of the year, the rest of the decade, the rest of your life, you are loved. You are protected. You are amazing as you are right now. Allow yourself to gently return to the rest of your day. I want to thank you for journeying with me. And before we end, I'd like to read another poem from um, my book, Regala Healing. And this one is appropriately titled Self-Love. And that's what doing all these micro practices are about to love yourself more so you can care for yourself more. So it's on page 60 in the physical book. And if you have the ebook, it's on page 44. And it's entitled Self-Love. Self-love is paying attention. Self-love is without hesitation. Self-love is clarity of mind. Self-love is hard to find. Self-love filled with compassion, self-love, unending passion. Self-love is a positive inner voice. Self-love is a necessary choice. Self-love is an act of kindness. Self-love is not mindless. Self-love is without a judge. Self-love is a gentle nudge. Self-love is restful sleep. Self-love is what I keep. And so I invite you as we come to a close to please join me every first and third Sunday right here at 9 a.m. Pacific time. I ask you if this program has been helpful for you or enriching for you, I'd like you to like and share this program. 
leave comments. I do read and respond to them um, and your questions. And I do that beginning immediately after I sign off. I'd like you to visit my site, uh, regalahealing.com to learn more about my healing and self-care uh, resources. And also the other thing I forgot to tell you is now I have a podcast channel and you can find me and you go to the Poetry of Healing and you can find me on the major uh, podcast platforms, um, Apple, iHeart, um, I can't remember all of them, but um, Google, yes, uh, you can find me. So thank you for joining me today. And as always, I wish you love and light. And I'll see you the next time.